Hello, I'm at the Noah Webster House. From the moment you step through the door, the Noah Webster House in West Hartford, Connecticut, brightly and brilliantly tells the life and times tale of Noah Webster. Noah Webster's birthplace is now home to the West Hartford Historical Society, who from this small footprint are far-reaching in their impact, true to the spirit of Noah Webster. The Noah Webster House itself is a National Historic Landmark, which means it has to be nationally significant to be designated by the U.S. Department of the Interior. So we do tell a big story. Noah Webster is often referred to as the forgotten founding father. He had major and lasting influence on the formulation of the Constitution and law, in particular in the area of copyright. Education, emancipation and unification were at his core. So he was one of those 18th century minds that was interested in any number of things, most well known now for the dictionary, but even that was revolutionary at the time because he introduced American pronunciations and American words to what was considered a British language. You know, Webster is best known for his dictionary, but actually preceding his dictionary was the blueback speller. And I'm here in Blueback Square, named after Blueback Speller. What was the Blueback Speller for? It was to unify the nation with a common language and pronunciation. Well, as a Brit, I think I'm going to look up and see, how does one say tomato? How many Blueback Spellers did he sell? Um, it's somewhere around 100 million copies. A hundred million, million copies. Right. He had his hand in so many things and really fought for people who weren't represented other ways. He worked for the emancipation of slaves, didn't believe in it, so he was an early abolitionist. He founded Amherst College. He was a philosopher. He was a statesman. To write his dictionary, he had to master over 20 languages. It took him 27 years to write it. He wrote it all by hand. I'm inspired by somebody who does so many things and does them all well. Noah Webster wasn't from a wealthy family, but schooled by the local minister, he won himself a place at Yale at the age of 16, when Nathan Hale was a senior there. Throughout his life, he developed a remarkable network of influential people, such as Ben Franklin and George Washington, and dining later in life with President Andrew Jackson. He really associated with the most important people of his time, which is pretty good for a farm boy that was born in West Hartford, Connecticut. So how did he not get to sign as a founding father? He had a very strong personality. He was an opinionated man. He wrote extensively. He didn't hesitate to criticize things he thought were wrong. So he was not invited to be part of the Continental Congress, but he was in Philadelphia when they met. He participated in some of the discussions. He knew all the players. But uh, due to his forceful personality, he was not an actual participant. This is the room that Noah Webster was physically born in. Right. So he actually wrote at one point, it was a room good enough for the humble event of his birth. Noah Webster would love, I think, what we've done with his birthplace here in West Hartford. We serve 10,000 school children a year. We have 20 schools, for example, where we pay for the entire program for them because it's an underserved school. We really connect kids with direct experiences that are going to make them think about the 18th century. Here's a colonial toaster. Put the bread in there, flip it around, there you go. Place I want both sides one. Evenly. I want one. That's it's pretty great. nifty, isn't yeah. it? So when I see all these little faces come through the house and they're talking about words, literacy, abolition, race, and the media today, all those are things that Noah would have immediately been thrilled to hear. Anyone can see a picture of the house on the web now, but if you come to the Noah Webster house, you're going to be immersed in activity. You're going to learn how to cook on a hearth. You're going to learn how to wear colonial clothes. You're going to learn how to make soap. You're going to learn how to write with a quill pen. You're going to hold a town meeting. You're going to have a discussion about the abolition of slavery and take sides. Children are exposed to a lot here and it's so much experience-based learning. Often I'm asked, why history? And on the surface of it, as someone who's trained as an architectural historian, I could tell you all about cupolas, I could tell you all about fancy moldings, I could tell you about decorative arts, but to me, the reason I have stayed in the history field for 35 years is that I think that if you study history, it will give you strength, it will give you courage, and it will give you hope. And it will make it clear to you that somebody who looked just like you could succeed. 
Funding for Connecticut's cultural treasures is provided by CPTV, Connecticut Tourism, the State Historic Preservation Office of the DECD, Melinda and Paul Sullivan, and People's United Bank, what know-how can do.